it. I wanted to get you on this one because you brought up the 12 steps mm -hmm. and how a lot of it is related to a lot of the other things we talk about and, you know, some things you've gone through your life. So let's start there. Let's start. Uh, tell me about it. <laughs> tell me about it what, what about it i mean how did you even get how did you get to the 12 steps like why is that even a thing for you um because i was powerless over drugs and alcohol damn and, and uh for some reason i didn't remember anybody ever giving me any coping skills growing up mm. from the, my youngest age it was like you know be a man yeah get through this you're a good, strong hillbilly from Western North Carolina. <laughs> you know, your willpower will get you through anything. Right. Just man up. And, uh, you know, wasn't a whole lot in there about uh, getting a mortgage uh, or anything else that I was going to mm -hmm. face in life. Mm -hmm. So early on, I had all these voices in my head about uh, being lesser than and, uh, you know, conditional love at home from your parents. Like, and so this thing in that, a rubbery brain of a young child i yeah. figured out that you know in order for you to love me and take care of me i was gonna have to do exactly what you wanted me to do and be whoever you wanted me to be hmm. and that kind of stuck with me and then when i got old enough to start drinking those voices went away and wow that was the coping skill that i had for a lot of years was anytime there was a problem i just you know drink or use or right whatever you had handy and long as you made good grades, my folks didn't give a toot about hmm. whatever else was going on because, you know, doesn't seem to be affecting him. <laughs> well, yeah. And so kind of makes sense. Yeah, for sure. I mean, yeah, if, yeah, I, I, and I went with the same thing with my first kid too. And so, uh, well, we learn by experiencing, we learn by watching. Exactly. Yeah. We don't come with instruction books. No. And, um, so I went through a whole lot of business and a whole lot of uh, life just using those same old coping mechanisms that I had. And um, finally, one day, it quits working. Mm -hmm. You know, the, we say that the uh, cucumber turns into a pickle. <laughs> and and you can't go back again. I mean, it's, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's very hard to turn. People hear this into. and they think, you know, it's a disease. Well, you know, if you pour an organic solvent into your bloodstream every day or regularly for over a span of time, mm. it's going to affect your brain. Right. And it affects your reward center. Mm. And, you know, uh, one thing I will say is I'm not smarter than anybody else, but I have been exposed to a whole lot of material on this that, uh, most people haven't been because I think anybody with any kind of disease or condition is going to research it some. And once you do that over a span of years, it changes the biochemistry in your brain. It just makes sense, you know, because right. if I pour ethyl alcohol onto a pair of rubber sneakers, it melts it. And right. so there's right. probably, or they put it in gasoline, you know, 10% is ethanol. Mm -hmm. And so it did something. And then mm -hmm. after a while, um, it got to where it didn't work anymore. There wasn't that same feeling that you had for the, when you were first starting to use it. It's like, I always say anybody over 40 that uses the word party as a verb is probably an alcoholic. And so, <laughs> um, I didn't have, a, you know, those, uh, coping mechanisms that I had had for all those years, they're not there anymore. And I needed right. And I couldn't do anything about it. And so um, I got forced into treatment. I didn't want to go. And I got forced into uh, AA, which was the one that the court sent me to. It could have been any other A. And um, you know, they said, you got to do this, 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 and this to stay out of jail. Mm. And I didn't want to go to big boy jail. Right. And so I started going and... Um, met another guy there who was in the medical field and he turned out to be sicker than I was. And he had had, he had been straight and sober for a while and we got to be pals. And, uh, you know, like I said to him the first time he said, well, how are you spiritually? And I said, well, I think I'm an agnostic. I'm too big a pussy to be an atheist. 
And, <laughs> and he said, how's that working out for you? <laughs> Here you are on the brink of prison. Yeah. And you can't quit drinking and you can't quit using. So how's that working out? Mm. And that was like one of those duh moments, you know, that, uh, that I'd never had in life before. And so they presented me with suggestions. And that was another thing about it that, you know, nothing was told that I had to do it this way. Right. And so, uh, it turned into, um, you know, over a span of years because it took a whole lot of years to get this screwed up. So it's going right. to take a little bit of time to get unscrewed. Right. It doesn't. Yeah. Let alone realize that I'm not going to stay unscrewed unless I keep doing the things that are suggested. to me. Mm -hmm. And so that's how I fell into the 12 steps. So, yeah. So it's a com continual process. Yep. This is not something you just do once. No. Uh, well, you know, when I first went in, when I first started in uh, recovery, I just wanted the pain to go away. Right. Just, right. I didn't put any condition on it at all. Right. It was just somebody, please get these people off my ass yeah. and make this awful psychic pain that I'm in go away. And I could go and talk to these people. And I mean, there's 400 meetings of some kind of recovery in the Midlands every day. Really? And so, you know, it was someplace that I could go and at least hide for an hour at a time. Mm -hmm. And, uh, if I was lucky, maybe even pick up something here or there, but yeah, for a long time, it was just, please just, you know, yeah. four walls to keep the world at bay for a long time. 